so welcome. Um, thank you for coming out and uh, and and uh, broadcasting our message today, everyone who's assembled here. Um, it looks like one last camera is running over here. Are you ready to go? Okay. Just trying to be inclusive here. So it, what we're what we're trying to do right now is share a message with the public, but but also model that we have to be careful and do things differently right now. And so if you notice, we're all standing about three to six feet apart. We're doing this outside, and then we're all gonna go back to what we have to do to stay safe and take care of each other. Um, this COVID-19 pandemic reminds us of our common humanity and about how interconnected all people are to each other. An injury to one is indeed an injury to all. During this public health crisis, we must come together to take better care of each other. Caring for the collective starts with caring for yourself by using universal precautions. You probably are sick of hearing this by now, but I'm gonna say it again because we cannot say this enough. We have to take these everyday preventive actions to help stop the spread of germs. Wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. And if soap and water is not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze with your arm or a tissue, then throw the tissue in the trash. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. And if you feel sick right now, don't be afraid to get help. Please call your primary care doctor first. And if you can't get through to them, try the urgent care. And if you can't get through to them, try calling the emergency room. If you can. We need, to, we need to avoid just showing up at doctor's offices and emergency rooms because we don't want to clog the system of care and overwhelm our providers when there's people who truly need emergency help. So call first if you can, or have someone call for you if you can. Keep in mind that the emergency room is not the place you want to be waiting around during a public health emergency. However, if you have serious symptoms, do call 911 and follow their advice. So at this time, we need to minimize the transmission of disease, and we need to flatten the curve of infection before the health system, before the health system gets overwhelmed. And we're gonna do this by social distancing. That's why people are seeing uh, businesses being closed right now and shut down temporarily. It's to create social distancing. Social distancing is a public health practice that aims to prevent sick people from coming in close contact with healthy people in order to prevent or slow down the spread of disease. And this is one of the best ways to slow down the spread of coronavirus or any other disease at this time. So in order to create social distance, it's recommended that people avoid public spaces, that we stay six feet away from each other, that we reduce or eliminate mass gatherings, and remember that even small gatherings can be dangerous. For, for people who have chronic disease or people with immunosuppression or our elders. Social distancing is a strategy meant to prevent disease and can have positive consequences, but we need to, need to make sure that we do not cause harm with this and that we don't cause panic. We need to be thinking about everyone right now, about others as well as ourselves, because we're all in this together. So please make sure that you have food, but we don't need to hoard. Aggressively hoarding food can lead to food scarcity for the most vulnerable. So in general, be mindful of your neighbors. We need to look out for each other right now. Social distancing does not mean social isolation. We have to find ways to stay in contact. And luckily, many people have technology these days that allows an unprecedented level of social interaction. But don't forget about the people out there who don't have access to that technology. We need, to we need to check on each other right now. So as we shift towards greater so social distancing behavior, it's important that we build networks of mutual aid to take care of each other through this crisis. Next up, we have Kaya. 
to talk about local efforts to engage in mutual aid and solidarity with our neighbors. Thank you. So what do we mean when we say mutual aid? We're talking about the work that we are doing right now. This is the deep, responsive organizing, volunteering, outreach, and community support that everyday individuals are providing outside of our current governmental structures. These efforts are underway to mitigate the devastating impacts that closures and disruptions are causing to those who will fall behind, those most vulnerable. Mutual aid efforts are the direct responses to the immediate needs of people in our communities and are most informed by the community members. These are local responses, people willing to share their supplies, their food, their labor, and services to fill in the glaring holes within our social safety nets. This is the foundational work of the fulfillment of the social contracts that we have to uphold the dignity, the safety, and the care for all persons in this state that are being tested to their limits with each passing day. Mutual aid is the grassroots level organizing work that keeps us alive through this pandemic and our community safe. We call on all left and progressive allies to step up to providing aid for one another. We invite people to make their needs known. We are not simply arranging the systems or coordinating their use. We're participating in the work of helping one another through this crisis. We expect to see our elected leaders at the state and county level step up and use their resources to meet the needs that we're identifying. We are the change. Mutual aid is not a spectator sport. While we are each doing what we can to flatten this curve, mutual aid recognizes that we cannot all step back if we're to survive this moment. We do this work for those who have no choice. Any engagements from our government systems with mutual aid efforts should not usurp community efforts underway. There are several mutual aid networks forming across the state. We encourage you to connect through social media platforms and the internet right now to get involved if you are willing. There will be more opportunities to connect outside of electronic means, but those are still under construction. Thank you. Um, up next, our, we'll hear from, about our shared demands from Dave and Scarlett. Scarlett. As the state of Vermont braces for the impacts of the COVID-19 outbreak, it is all too clear that neither federal, state, or local governments nor private companies are responding adequately to the public health crisis at hand. Because of the structure of our economic system, people are faced with the difficult choice between public safety or economic survival. We need to provide support for people first. That way, businesses can shut down and workers and families can stay home when necessary to protect public health and the common good. We recognize that the failings of the United States in response to the coronavirus are symptomatic. If we had access to universal health care, housing, and human, and human rights, provides the essential services that keep society running every day. The many people who are not able to work remotely risk exposure in the workplace, especially those who work or care for the sick, elderly, and people with disability. Those who are compelled to miss work due to sickness, caring for loved ones, or mandatory workplace closing face economic crisis. Those without paid sick leave or health care face calamity. This is why the state of Vermont must act to mitigate the social and economic impact of these unprecedented, this unprecedented situation. Unions are the first line of defense for workers, fighting for good working conditions and living standards. Unions, unions need the support of the state of Vermont 
That's what all working people do. An injury to one is an injury to all. The organizations present here today include labor unions, a tenants union, the Burlington Progressive Party, identity-centered organizations, immigrant workers, socialists, anarchists, and nonprofits. We have come together today because we recognize the necessity to leverage what power we have in the interest of working class Vermonters when faced with this crisis. Each organization presents, uh, each organization present has published its own open letters to the public officials and demands of the city are more than the sum of our parts. With one voice, we urge our city, our state, our towns, and the federal government to leverage absolutely everything that is in their control over public resources and legislative power over the private sector to take the following immediate actions to address the threat coronavirus represents to our communities. Thanks, Dave. So I'm going to be reading the demands themselves. Number one, anti-racism.
used by their employees to the greatest extent possible. All the organizations that are present today wish to emphasize that the spread of COVID-19 will be disproportionately felt by disabled, elderly, and very young people in our communities. But a crisis like this will also exacerbate existing structural inequalities of racism, sexism, oppression of our queer and trans siblings, indigenous people, immigrants and new Americans, and of course, all working class people. We stand here today because we are committed to the old labor slogan, an injury to one is an injury to all. We demand action from our government, but we also encourage unity and solidarity among all people, even in the most isolating times. While in-person organizing will become very difficult, we will continue to fight for one another as unions, as organizations, and as individuals. The coronavirus has exposed cracks in our system which need to be dealt with. We are here to call for immediate action today to mitigate harm already done, but these demands must live beyond the present crisis and go hand in hand with more significant long-term guarantees of public well-being, including a Green New Deal, universal health care, and much more. Thank you. country which was described to be going through the worst humanitarian crisis now is having to face the pandemic of coronavirus the safety and the protection of migrants and refugees being held in unsanitary conditions with no access to their families or legal support at the northern and southern borders must also be taken into account as opposed to funding the building of separating walls, detention facilities, and ICE data centers, the efforts must be put instead towards welcoming anyone seeking refuge or fleeing, or fleeing oppression at the borders with open arms and human hospitality. 
all the funds that were previously allocated for unnecessary wars or imperial ambitions must now be re reallocated for the purposes of saving us all from the madness of the system that allowed the mismanagement of this crisis. This includes the federal government's financial involvement in these wars, including its funding for the F-35 fighter jets. Funds that go towards bailing out banks are to be used in securing the lives of sick workers in the US and in outsourced sources where underpaid workers produce commodities for the US. Funds that are spent towards consumers' extravagance ought to be put instead to ensure a secure flow of basic life needs to any community around the world that needs it. This is how we regain our human solidarity.